Hey everyone, it's me Ryan and today we're going to talk about using your phone as a webcam because during this period of the circuit breaker, there'll be a lot of people who are going to be on online lessons such as Teams, Zoom or this an online some meeting places. So there's going to be times where you will need a webcam. However, during this period, stores like Challenger are closed because they're not really considered an essential service and if you're trying to buy a webcam online, it's going to take quite a fair bit of time and money. So why not just use something that you already have on hand, something like your smartphone. So I'm going to show you guys how to do it today, so let's jump right in. So to use your phone as a webcam, the things you're going to need is a phone. So for me, I'm going to be using a Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus and an iPhone 7 to test it on both Android and iPhone. Yes, it's a cross-compatible software. You also need the charging cables for them as that will support data transfer. Don't use add some random cheap cable that does not support data transfer. The way you know that it works is when you plug in your device to your PC in Windows, it will pop up as iPhone 7 or as the Galaxy S10 Plus. Now for the things that you need to download, for your phone, you need to download DroidCam and for your desktop, you need to download the DroidCam client with Android and iOS support. I'll link it in the description down below. For Android, you'll need to enable developer's option in settings. So you need to go to settings first and scroll down to about phone and click on software info and press the build number 10 times. Then you have to key in your PIN to enable developer's options. Once you have enabled it, go to settings again and then scroll down to the developer's option, enable USB debugging, and you're done here. Once you have installed the application on your iPhone or Android phone, you want to plug in your phone via USB. To try to use a USB 3.0 header, as 2.0 you get a lot of instability issues. Let's say with a Type-C port, you can use that too for the fastest transfer rate. So once you've launched the application, press the USB button and then press the refresh button. Once you've done so, it will find your device, which is either it will show SF something for Android devices and a whole random string of numbers for Apple. It's very weird, but yeah. And then you can just press done. You can also choose to either enable just video or microphone through your phone as well, so that you can use your phone as a microphone at the same time if you say you don't have that. There's also an option for Wi-Fi, though it's not as great compared to wired. For Wi-Fi, just key in the numbers that you'll see on your phone, which will be 192.168. and a few other string of numbers. I'm not going to reveal my IP address here. For Wi-Fi, I'll say it's fine. Really depends on your strength of your Wi-Fi network. If you say you're very near to your router, it's quite alright. But if you say you get further away, your video will get a bit choppy and not really usable. For compatibility, I've tested it on Skype and Microsoft Teams. These are the two most commonly used applications out there that would require a webcam. S23 on the S10 Plus with DroidCam working on audio and video right now. To get this working, just go into your application settings and select your virtual microphone for as your main microphone and for your webcam settings, go down to DroidCam Source 3 or 2. Okay, I would strongly recommend adjusting the quality for your DroidCam to 720p 4x3 resolution. So, to adjust the resolution, it's quite simple. Search for HD mode in your search bar and you'll see it. Launch the application in administrator mode. And next, select 720p 4x3 resolution for the best compatibility around. You don't really want to use 16x9, sometimes the USB transfer speeds may not be that ideal and you get some choppiness in your video too. So overall, DroidCam is actually very good. Not only is it free, but it's also compatible for, pe for people who have Android phones or iPhones over here. So for both sides of the party, you're fine. It's cross-compatible only for Windows though. So if you have a Mac, good luck. But then if you have a Windows desktop here, I'm sure you're fine just using this software. As you, Not only can you use your phone as a webcam, you also can charge your phone at the same time. So you kill two birds at one stone. So with that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Leave a like, subscribe, share a comment down below, and I guess I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out and stay safe.